Uh, actual terms and conditions, they make pretty clear that they're not really a partner in terms of how a partnership relationship is really created. So typically a partner has liability for everything that the other partner does. Here there's indemnification clauses and uh, they specifically have say, I, I pulled it up, section 6G, YouTube does not endorse any content. The person creating the content has ultimate um, uh, authority. So yes, there are legal ramifications to calling someone a partner, but ultimately that's based entirely on the contract between the, 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 the two people who are purportedly partners. So it, would, it, it may be a challenge and something that YouTube would bring. The other thing that I would just sort of mention, uh, which struck out at me, is that this case is filed in the Southern District of Florida, right? Yeah. Yeah. Sure. So. Um, <laughs> That's where he lives. That's where he's filing the ball. Yeah. Right, 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 right. Yeah, yeah. Right. very smart man, man. Uh, you, YouTube has provisions that say that any case would have to be in, you know, Santa Clara, California. So I imagine Is that they're it? going to try to dismiss based on a jurisdictional sort of issue. Because oh, any well, they were, they're going to say lots of mean things yeah, about me. That yeah. doesn't bother me. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> hey, um, can, can I, people can I, are mean to me all the time. Let me let me ask one more question before before we go to Sasha. So I'm a little confused as to what uh, you know what the biggest uh, YouTube's negligence was. Was it playing the BitConnect ads, or was it like allowing these uh, promoters to literally have their channels about? promoting BitConnect and profiting from the MLM uh, part of it and the Ponzi part of it? Like, like is it uh, for playing ads on my YouTube channel or is it for, they've been informed so many times, hey, this guy's YouTube channel is literally about uh, promoting BitConnect, which is a scam and you shouldn't have allowed him to do the channel. So which, which of the two is it or both? So can you bring up the uh, article again, Tone, and show yeah. the quote? So we kind of talk about this. There's something called the Communications Decency Act. And the Communications Decency Act basically allows YouTube, Google to get away with publishing anything without responsibility. So the quote's actually talking about what you're asking. So we're not actually suing them for the publishing the content. What the lawsuit is talking about is they were warned. And we actually, in the complaint, we list about... 10 videos that itself were posted on YouTube, forget just about the generic complaints, of people saying that BitConnect was a scam and that they were financial partners with uh, the promoters and BitConnect themselves. Oh, wait, wait, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, wait, 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 okay. This is where the confusion comes in. YouTube was partners with the promoters. So YouTube right. has what's called the YouTube Partner Program. Right. Now they're, and now what Justin read, and they're gonna do the terms and conditions, and every one of my cases, if terms and conditions were a get out of jail free card, I would never have make a single dollar in a lawsuit. Because everyone always in their terms and conditions says, we have no liability and we have no responsibility. Think about why your mortgage, when you go buy, sign a mortgage on your house, why it's 86 pages long. Because everything's your fault, nothing's the bank's fault. Yet there's a lot of bank litigation. So the defense lawyers- right, and, 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 and every time you guys try, there is another page for you to sign when I go to buy a house. What? Exactly. <laughs> so, well, we're so, th and this is specific, and this is what makes the YouTube case so different. And we only served YouTube two days ago. I expect a leather in about five days, cutting off my Google pay per clicks <laughs> campaigns, cutting off my all my accounts. Oh, you gotta have aliases, man. They can, they're not supposed to know your real name. See, I don't do that. I'm so stupid. I use myself. Uh, so, when I get retaliated against, that's a whole nother, that's a show in and of itself. So the lawsuit is limited because of the Communication Decency Act. We're not trying to create new law. We're simply doing what the government, what the government, what the government has next out. And the only thing they haven't, what they that's been carved out by the courts is this duty to warn. So I think we're in a we'll call it fortunate position where the people who lost money, they lost money that was foreseeable that YouTube could have stepped in. And by the way, the way the way we know YouTube could have stepped in, they did two weeks later. After two weeks after this all blew up, you couldn't advertise. Yeah, they banned the ads. Okay, so, so, but your, uh, your claim against YouTube or your complaint with YouTube is specifically those 30 second ads that they were playing in front of other people's YouTube videos that had nothing to do with BitConnect 
suckering more people in. Is that the main grievance? Or is yeah, it main, also the... actual like BitConnect promoters and their channels? So it's it's both. It's the it's bo- it is both. Okay, it's that both. that was it's my that, that that's yeah. where my confusion was. Okay. So we've sued so the original lawsuit, don't forget, this is a consolidated class action. There were a bunch of class actions filed throughout the US. It got consolidated into the Florida case. And I got appointed lead co-class counsel with another major law firm out of Washington, D.C. Um, and the lawsuit, we're suing the promoters individually. We're suing BitConnect, the promoters individually, and now YouTube. So the promoters individually, they were the ones that some of these guys had like 100,000 followers. So the algorithms, don't forget, as you get more successful on YouTube, there are different uh levels of review for each threshold you achieve that allows you more success on their algorithm for people finding you. And that's important here because again, that means that YouTube is supposed to be looking at certain of these successful uh, promoters more with a more critical eye. And clearly that didn't happen yet. Okay, gotcha. All right, now let's head over to Sasha and what are your thoughts on all this and uh, just general comments. Yeah, I had a chance to read the complaint, David, and I thought it was excellent work um, reading through the whole thing. Uh, the I I certainly see the argument against the promoters going in your favor because we already have the case where the SEC sued um, Joe Joe Montrol and the Bitfunder, and they kind of went through all of the duty to warn there if you're selling securities and there's been a hack, like in that case, there was 6,000 Bitcoin stolen and they didn't tell anyone. Um, They said very clearly, like, you have to warn on that. So with how it applies here, like, I think I see those two, um, you know, having that duty to warn, I'll be really interested to see what happens with YouTube and that duty to warn. And, uh, and just getting through YouTube's, um, you know, terms of service, as Justin said, like they, I'm, I'm sure there's probably an arbitration clause in there too. So it would be unfortunate if we didn't get to see it in public, but uh, I, I don't, I don't think there is an arbitration clause. I, um, I, I, I will, I will say this about the duty to warn. You can make an argument maybe that, you know, corporations, the defense sides will point to terms of services and and you know courts will ignore that but traditionally courts have not really ignored that specifically when you're in a world where you're you're testing for negligence and whether a duty to warn actually was followed uh, the terms of service become very important i will also say that there's there's a practical consideration to all of this which is there's 10 videos listed in the complaint about bitconnect being a scam well let's assume that bitconnect was indeed a scam I, you know, and, and a Ponzi scheme, there are 1.3 trillion videos on YouTube. There are 300 hours of content put up every minute. So to say that anyone can upload a video to YouTube and that constitutes a warning that would justify ultimate liability on YouTube for whatever the content that they're allowing to put up is would just completely cripple YouTube as somewhat of a public entity. This is something that um, we've seen happen over and over again on, um, you know, in the, in the First Amendment world. And uh, just l- the last point I'll, I'll make on this is um, Google and Facebook and YouTube, you know, they said no more crypto ads. Well, that lasted a couple, you know, I think a week or so before they reversed the decision. And one of the reasons why is because by just making a blanket statement that no more crypto ads, you're implicating all sorts of complicated antitrust laws that could potentially lead to liability to Google and YouTube. So I think a court ultimately will view YouTube as an ultimate, you know, as a provider of content uh, as being in, in a difficult situation and, and may rule in their favor. Yeah. Um, oh, sorry. Uh, I, I, I was going gonna, I was gonna to follow up on that, Justin. And this is why I wanted to make it very clear from David, which part uh, is YouTube potentially negligent in allowing people's YouTube channels, in which case I agree with you, or allowing the BitConnect ads on other people's channels? And that's where I think YouTube has a responsibility of knowing if the ads that they are running are straight up Ponzi schemes with enough complaints telling them that they are. T- Tone, you're, you're, you're asking too good of a question. I think 
David and I might understand this. David's money is made in certifying a class. It's not made in whether YouTube is ultimately liable or not. So, <laughs> so, so the, the question actually becomes is, does the fact that some people may have been tricked into going to BitConnect because of YouTube or because of Facebook or because of Reddit, the complaint mentions Facebook and Reddit and all these other sites, does does that ruin the typicality requirement needed to certify a class? I think that's going to be the main point that YouTube's gonna gonna allege is that you haven't done enough to to allege that there's actually a class that could hold YouTube liable. Right, right. but Justin, but what do you think? Do you think YouTube should be? More, I, I, I'm with you. I don't yeah. think they should be as.